All right, in this video, we're gonna be doing wrist range of motion, as always starting with the active range of motion, and then we're gonna to proceed to passive and then resist it. So just like before, please just follow my motions or directions, basically. Again, we would like to keep the wrist in a neutral position when we are doing our uh, range of motion testings, just like the elbow. So in this case, I would like to basically mirror my motions I would like you to. So we're gonna start with the flexion, beautiful, and extension. Okay, so I'm looking at this point just to make a good point here. When the client is doing flexion or extension, I want to make sure again the elbow is not doing a lot of motions because this is supposed to be a wrist range of motion testing. So make sure that you're observing the entire open chain, open kinetic chain. That's very important. Okay, let's do it one more time. Flexion, perfect. Extension, okay. And now we're going to do supination. And as I mentioned in the elbow testing, if you have watched that one, that we're looking at making sure that there's no abduction or adduction of the GH. And then we did the supination, and now we're going to follow up with the pronation. Perfect. Now radial deviation, excellent. And then ulnar deviation. In this case, you're going to have to lift your elbow up a little bit to make room. Now you could basically ask the client to, as a permission, you can have the elbow supported from the whole time and then the client can keep the hand up but ultimately it doesn't really matter that much because ulnar deviation also can be accomplished really easily this way and that will be basically uh, concluding our AROM testing active range of motion testing of the wrist it has six motions again flexion extension pronation and supination and then radial deviation and then ulnar deviation one more thing to point out uh, most of the pronation and supination is actually happening on the um, elbow complex. So you're really looking at a minimal motion of pronation happening on the pronation and supination happening on the wrist. So the major mover is actually ulnar deviation, uh, radial deviation, and flexion extension. And that will conclude. And don't forget to, of course, do it bilaterally. Okay, and we will continue our wrist assessment with passive range of motion. And as you know, I'm supposed to be moving the joint, not the client. So I'll take the wrist and then we will try to stick with the order that we did our active range of motion of the wrist testing. So we will go with the flexion and passive over pressure. And it's supposed to be tissue stretch. And then we will need to do extension. Okay, passive over pressure. Now, one of the things definitely we are looking at, wrist again, so make sure that you're not really doing finger motions so much. That's why you'll notice that my hand is actually in the palm or on the, or the dorsal side here on the posterior side, basically off the hand. I'm pushing on the metacarpals I'm directing, not so much the fingers and curling the fingers or anything like that. It's a wrist test, not individual finger test. So we did the flexion. Passive word pressure, extension, passive word pressure. Both of them are tissue stretch. Now, in this case, we need to do supination and pronation. However, those are different than elbow pronation and supination when it comes to hand placement. Now, I don't have to go all the way to elbow at this point. This will suffice because I'm just looking at wrist pronation and supination. Again, radius holding, supination. That will be tissue stretch. And then switch hands, pronation. And again, tissue stretch. Now you might have seen it, some alternatives like the client or the patient, um, the examiner won't necessarily move his hands. We'll do supination and then we'll move and do pronation. I don't necessarily like it because it's not really um, biodynamically good for your, biomechanically good for your own hands. So pl please try to be safe for yourself and make sure to use multiple different angles. Now in this case, radial deviation is very simple. Radial deviation is gonna be very limited even under normal circumstances. And in most cases, it's actually a bone and bone and feel. So when you do passive over pressure, it will be relatively uh, abrupt stop, just like an elbow extension. And then we have the ulnar deviation, same idea. Basically, it will be bone and bone. And you're looking at passive over pressure, bone and bone, ulnar deviation, same idea. But if you notice, I'm actually doing it again on the neutral elbow and neutral wrist. Please don't try to do this extended or flexed or pronated and supinated motions because then you're actually adding on a bunch of motions and it's not becoming a pure radial deviation or ulnar deviation. 
So make sure the elbow and the wrist in a neutral position. And that will conclude our passive range of motion of the wrist. We will proceed with the wrist range of motion now. All right, in this video, we're gonna be uh, following up with resisted range of motion of the wrist. We already done our AROM and PROM, and now we're gonna do our ROM. Uh, six motions, just like AROM and PROM. This time, again, just like the wrist range of motion, the client will be resisting, and I will be putting pressure from different directions. Now, I would like to, as always, try to follow up with AROM and uh, PROM order. So we're going to start with the wrist flexion and then proceed with wrist extension and so on. Now, the good news is this is the wrist open pack position, neutral position. So you don't really need to do a big different uh, adjustment. So all you have to do is make sure you're supporting the wrist joint and throw out the forearm right here. And then I'll proceed of pushing into the palm, not again the digits. Remember, we're trying to do wrist testing. If I involve the digits, then it will be a lot of intrinsic hand muscles also involved. We're looking for wrist flexion, not digit flexion. So make sure your hand is here. As I always, I will tap twice. Don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one. That was wrist flexion. And proceed with the wrist extension. I'll push here, don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one, excellent, and that was the wrist extension. Now we're gonna proceed with, because we did supination and pronation, we're gonna start with the uh, supination now. So if I push this way, again, just for very common mistake purposes, when I push this way, the model will activate pronator muscles, so making sure that you're actually doing supination. And in this case, again, I don't really have to be on the elbow, this is a wrist test, so this is sufficient. Radius holding. I'm going to try to turn the uh, wrist into pronation. So supination will be activated and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. And then quickly switch, please, and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. So supination and then pronation is being tested. Now we'll do a radial deviation. So you don't really need to do anything particular. One more thing to worry about though. Try to include the entire structure here, <clears throat> not just the, uh, like do not isolate the thumb if you cannot. And we'll push from here and hold, five, four, three, two, one. So we're testing all the radial deviators and I'll put my hand underneath and I'll try to push it up and that will be ulnar deviation. Five, four, three, two, one. And that will basically conclude all the six motions that we need to test for the wrist joint. Flexion, extension, pronation, supination, radial deviation, and ulnar deviation. And don't forget to compare with the other side, please. And that will conclude the wrist range of motion testing.